Aloha everyone. Well, we have come out. Well, we're not there yet, but we're going to go see the lot. However, uh, if y'all been watching Scott's channel over on Pal Hawaii Tours, uh, with the work he's been doing out on my lava lot, uh, a lot of people have been asking, why is it so difficult to get out there? So I decided I'm going to show y'all why it's so difficult to get out there. So you see, we're here at Fissure 8, and this is a, a person's property right here. But this is the terrain. And let's, let's, let me just walk back over here this way so we can kind of give you an idea. So this is coming down to the surface level. So we got this up area here. And you see this is all just chunky lava. It's broken for hoi hoi. So in order to get out there, we have to come up and over all this stuff. So imagine something with wheels and heavy trying to get it through here. The ATV does it pretty well because, well, it's an ATV. But we have these spots like this that, that will cave in under the weight. So, and hopefully my phone camera is doing a good job on the wind noise. It did the last time. So we will see. So, yeah, I just wanted to kind of film this walk out for y'all so that you can see just how difficult the train is and by the way we are on a actual road well down there is the road underneath all the lava and when we get up here to my lot actually my lot's lucky the lava flowed halfway across the road but never entered my lot Ooh, ugh. Um, and most of these lots over here, it didn't, um, actually get into them either. It come right up to the property lines. Oops. So yeah, so here, hey, look at this. See, this is, this is all part of the problem right here. So imagine trying to get a vehicle out through here, a big one anyways. But, uh, apparently the wood chipper makes it relatively easily now. They, uh, according to Scott, they had to stop in a few places and patch over a few little holes so the wheels didn't get stuck so and they have to take it slow but there's they've been managing to, to get it out here so I would I would assume that they don't they can't go that way so I imagine they've been going this way well maybe one of the next times they come out here with the chipper I'll have to come out with the drone and that would be kind of cool So yeah, so here, here let me show y'all this. This, this is one of the problems with this terrain, is that you can see, it helps give you some perspective. Here's my finger. That's how, let's see, uh, that's about how thick this is. What, maybe two inches? And then it's a big void underneath. Big void. Oh, I got light on the other side. Hopefully I don't drop my phone. Let's see, so yeah. So this kind of gives you an idea of what is under our feet and why getting machinery out here is difficult so until they come through and plow the road like they've done in some other places like on uh, highway 132 you know so we're hoping that the association at some point will decide to reopen our roads but i don't think they will unless us residents get together and force the organization to do so but most of these lots through here are vacant lots anyway so there's no one really here to fuss at them about it so if any roads get reopened it'll probably be some of the other roads before this one i suspect this probably will be one of the last ones because well just because of the proximity to figure eight Uh, and plus we still got some infrastructure debris out here. These are the, uh, the cables. We have power, phone, cable. See this right here I think is the phone. Yeah, so cable TV, like spectrum and power and all that stuff. It's still all laying out here where it fell. And of course, so now we hit this spot here, which is where the lava stopped. So what we, we're walking on now is just pure chephra that's got green overgrown. And of course, the lots over here on this side, as you can see, 
haven't been touched by the lava directly that is And we are almost up to my lot. And we've got a little bit of shelter from the wind, so hopefully the wind noise hasn't been an issue. As you can see here, this is where they've been turning around. Okay, what is this? Yeah, you know, it's interesting you did that because I was going to ask you. Yes. Oh, cool. I don't know if you can or not. Yeah. I don't know. Oh. oh, so this is what you meant when you were shoveling Tephra. Oh, okay. So, well, yeah, what I was going to ask you to do... Oh, and by the way, everybody, Scott with Val Horizon Tours is out here with me. Um, what I was going to ask you to do is, at some point, could we, like, maybe try to clear a little bit of the Tephra? and expose just a, a, a circular area of the road here? Well, my plan was to do the whole... Well, that works too. Thing, but we need to get Joel out here in his tractor with the bucket. That would be perfect. Well... It took a long time. Oh, I imagine the is heavy, especially it's all crunched no, down not, and wet. it's not heavy. No? But it just took a long time. Hmm. So, so here's a question for all y'all in the comments. We have this post here. And uh, if you go back into some of the 2018 videos, you'll see that this post had a mailbox on it. And this mailbox belonged to, of course, the lot crossed over here. I don't think they're going to be using this post anymore for a mailbox. And even if they decide to come back in the mailbox, they can have it back. But until then, I'd like to put something up here. And I was thinking, oh, maybe put another mailbox out there just for, you know, the giggles. But then I think, oh, maybe, maybe I should put something else. Like, maybe I should take some of the, uh, the, uh, uh Oh, where is it? <laughs> All the power cables through here, they're gone. Well, anyways, the, you know, the old power cable, I think about snipping some of those up and making some type of art sculpture to, 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 to nail down here. I don't know. So down in the comments, let me know what y'all think I should do. I mean, I'm not going to pull the post up. So it's either going to get a mailbox or it's going to get some, uh, some type of artwork or something. But just for the fun of it. I figure why not, right? Okay, now that we're, we're down here and y'all have seen how getting into the lot is, is you know easy to walk in, but everything else is difficult. This is what they've been doing. Obviously, in the video, they've been working on that end, not this end. So, we'll go down to this end. So, yeah, so this is what they've been doing. Oh, and, and no, I don't like that. The tephra. It just... It doesn't look pretty <laughs> anymore. Just, I don't know, it makes it look dirty. Ugh. So, yes, yeah, so. Oh, look at all this chipped wood. Boy, this is a thick layer. This is all the. Where's all the wood chips? This is it? Yeah. Is it too thick or something? You're standing on logs. So uh, well, I know. I just. I could have swore there was a lot. It looked like a lot more on, on your live stream. So, yeah. So, this is what Scott has been doing over on my lot. Because he's bored and wanted something to do. And he can't chop anything down on his lot because he already chopped it all down. And Joel, thank you again, Joel, for your help. Uh, he was out here the other day with Scott. Doing all the wood chipping. And they did a fantastic job. And I so do appreciate it. So, don't forget to say thank you to both Scott and Joel in the comments. Uh, for what they're doing out here for us, well, me and y'all. So, but yeah, I'm kind of, I'm kind of digging this this log pathway Scott's been building. I wasn't too sure about it when he first started, but if they could cover it all up with wood chips like that, I think that would be cool. It would be nice and solid. It drains off, so it won't be wet and muddy or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Gotta be careful though. It's hard to film and walk on this at the same time. Okay. So, oops. <laughs> and here's where we're gonna put the, the platform, which they seem to be doing more. I've done some more work on it here. But uh, yeah, so.
So yeah, so last time we were out here, we this was we had a, a tree, a burnt one, right about right there, or was it right there? It's somewhere right in that way. Right? It was sticking up in, in our view, but we went ahead and taken that out. So now we have an unobstructed view of fissure eight. And look at that view. Isn't that magnificent? Absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, I think having a little picnic table here with a roof over it and some tiki torches. <laughs> We can really turn this into a nice little picnic spot. And of course, we get the hibiscus in here growing and uh, and the uh, orchids and uh, I don't know. No avocados, though. No, we don't need no avocados, but some other uh, type fruiting trees. Uh, definitely get some bananas in here, I think, at some point. But that's all way down the line. Yeah, that's time and money that we got to get through well we got to get time to do the work and of course you know money as time goes by to, to fund the project it's like that you know that wood chipper that cost a pretty little penny and of course the gas and and all the other resources needed not to mention the the labor oh wow look at this this is cool is this that burnt tree that you took down yep look at that Yeah, that's where this one was next to a tree that got hit by a lava bomb and burned out. And this one, I think, is burned out on the, on the inside. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, because there's scar marks down on this end. It's possible, but that would there's, mean... There's some more of it. No, nah, I think that's just wood rot. Oh. Yeah, that's just wood rot. Yeah, that's just that's just wood rot. So we'll see I'll show y'all too what he's talking about. But yeah, so that, that's just where the, the inside core is rotting. That could actually be due to the uh the rapid ohia death. And let me show y'all this over here. So he pointed out that he thought this was the same stuff, but this is definitely uh there we go. That's definitely just wood rot. You can see it even come up through through here. So, oh, but what's really interesting, let's see if I can show y'all, this tree up there, I'm not sure if I can zoom in, I'm using a new camera app, oh yeah, oh yeah, we can, oh, but that's a quick zoom, see the hole, it looks like there's a hole through the trunk, but actually it isn't, it's, the trunk is like three-fourths of the way missing up there, and then the, what you see on the right, that's an actual, another branch coming from down below. So it's an optical illusion for us. So yeah, so this is so far. Uh, if y'all watched the other video when I came out here to see what Scott was up to, you can see that a lot of brush, or at least on that side where we came in, is missing. That's been all through the chipper, but they still got all this through here to, to still to do. So there's still many, many hours worth of work that needs to be done. So, and my plans are at some point to catch them out here and uh, fly the drone and get an aerial view of, of what's going on. I think that would be cool. Problem is, is Scott likes to come out here way too early for me. Oh, let's see, he puts more tephra here. Yeah, see, I don't like the tephra. I prefer the wood chips. It feels better walking on it. And there we go. Four of the lava lot. But that's why we're out here and we're still filming. Let's go ahead and walk down the road a little bit. And go take a look at the baby eights. See how much they're steaming, if anything. Oh, my finger's in the video. Sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, I need to get me a new handy cam. The one I got is it's, it still works, it's just, I've noticed in some of the footage that down in the bottom, I think it's the bottom left hand corner, the image gets blurry, so I think there's something wrong with the, the CMOS sensor in it. Or it could be something wrong with the lens, I don't know, but... I've had it now for three years, and it only does 1080p resolution. So... walk uphill okay 
Oh, and of course, y'all know this house from Scott's videos. It's sold. So there, and they also apparently bought the lot behind them, which is cool. And of course, over there is Fidger 24. And of course, the other end of the road. And here we have Fidger 8 and the Baby 8. So yeah, uh, looks like uh, one or two of the little vents there are steamy today as they normally are. So, I hope that zoom in doesn't really or, or change the quality of the image, but I'm sure it does. And of course we have the magnificent Fissure 8. And of course, the Ohana tree. Still there. All what's left of it. As you can see here down around the base. Let's walk over here. There's nothing left to fall on our head, so we can walk over here now. <laughs> So yeah, so as you can see here on the ground, this is all the debris. All the debris. That's over the years. It's taken three years for all this stuff to fall down. And you can see over there behind it, we got some big branches. So if left to its own device, this tree will probably stand for a good another three or four years. But yeah, so this is the lava field, Leilani Lava Fields. One of the lava field areas, anyways. Hey, that's it, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, let me know what you think about everything down in the comments, of course. And uh, we'll see you or talk to you again here soon. You have an amazing morning, afternoon, or evening.